Thank you so much, uh, Philip, for that nice introduction. And I must thank the Academy for um, electing me as a fellow. I mean, I could hardly believe it when I, when I actually got the notification. Thank you so much. So I'm going to talk to you about the work we've been doing in our laboratory. And it's, it's all about trying to control drug transport in order to make uh, molecules effective and uh, locate their target and also to reduce uh, side effects as well. So, so generally trying to make drugs uh, more efficacious. And um, what we use, we use nanoparticles and we design the chemistry that goes into these nanoparticles. So the, one of the nanosystems I'm going to be talking to you about, I actually remember drawing the structure on a piece of paper and then deciding on a route to synthesize the molecule. And that molecule now has been out licensed in, in various different um, uh, candidate medicines and, and will be going into the clinic this year. So we use these nanoparticles because once you have your drug uh, inside nanoparticles, you really can control where that drug goes. And we focused on key areas, getting drugs into the brain to treat neurological conditions and getting drugs into the retina using eye drops. At the moment, if you want to get um, uh, pharmaceutical uh, compounds to actually locate uh, the retina, you have to use an injection into the eyeball. So we've been able to, to show that we can use eye drops to do this. So using these nanoparticles uh, stuffed with drug, these nanoparticles are about um, a thousandth of the width of a human hair in size. So incredibly small, we are able to control drug transport. And we've done it by out, um, sort of in licensing the, the technology from UCL into a company that we formed. And these are the people behind the company. And we've won, the company has actually won awards from the Royal Society of Chemistry for this technology. And we call it our molecular envelope technology because when you have a company, you have to talk to funders and you have to have something that they can relate to. But it, essentially, it is a polymer. And as I said, I do remember the day I actually uh, drew the structure in my notebook. And so what the company has been able to do, as I said, is use this polymer to support various assets. And the ones in green are the ones that have been out licensed. I'm going to talk to you about this one at the top, uh, which is now called Envelta. But all of these have been out licensed and we've had uh, various, we've even used the polymer against COVID and out licensed that and various eye drop formulations, some of which are going into the clinic at um, uh, the end of this year. And this particular asset is going to go into the clinic. The opioid replacement asset will go into the clinic next year. So just looking at the opioid replacement asset in the first instance, what was it we were trying to solve? We we're trying to solve the problem of chronic pain and acute pain. And normally this is at the moment treated with, with opioid agonists, but um, there, are, there are lots of problems associated with treating um, pain with opioid agonists. And that's a, a large uh, variety of people have side effects. There is analgesic tolerance. And if you have analgesic tolerance, then there are very few, if not no pain relief that you can actually get. And so that is a huge problem. And of course, we have the opioid crisis predominantly in the US where there are 15,000 deaths from prescription opioids. And so we do have a problem with current severe pain relief. So we looked at a compound which is present in all our brains, leucine encephalin. And we made leucine encephalin druggable uh, with this um, self-assembling polymer technology I told you about. And so the first time we sort of decided that we want to make this druggable, we thought, well, how can we get these compounds into the brain? So we started quite simply by changing the compound a little bit and making the compound less water soluble. And we were able <laughs> then, by changing the molecule make these nanofibers. So we had nanoparticles that were actually like long tubes. And what we found was that once we changed the molecule by making it less water soluble with uh, covalent modification, we were able to make these long tubes and these long tubes actually got the compound into the brain. And, and, and that's uh, shown here. And not only did it get the compound into the brain, we also had the analgesic response. And you can see at the bottom left-hand corner how we test that. We give the compound. We then subject the animal to a 
thermal uh, stimulus and we look at how long the animal can, can sustain that thermal stimulus. And what you can see from the graph at the bottom right hand corner is that in actual fact, this molecule, when it was changed and made into these nanofibers, was able to get into the brain and was able to cause this analgesia. But of course, if you want to have a pain therapeutic, which is widely used, it can't only be used through the intravenous route. So we had to think about a different way of getting um, the, the drug of choice into the brain. And so we, we, what we did is that we actually went nose to brain delivery and we used uh, particulates to ensure that we had um, a compound which would not degrade in the nasal pass passages because this endogenous compound is rapidly degraded, doesn't last for any length of time, um, about three minutes in the blood before it's completely degraded. And it's also degraded in the nasal passages. So by wrapping it in this uh, molecular envelope technology, this self-assembling polymer, we could stop this degradation. We could get enough of the polymer into the brain and we could actually measure the pain relief. And the, we found some interesting things. We found that this encephalin does not induce any analgesic tolerance in our animal models. And most importantly, that the compound actually is effective even if you induce morphine tolerance. So we were the first to report that this compound is effective when you have morphine tolerance. And it's all about targeting a slightly different receptor combination with this compound, encephalin. And so because of this really favorable data, we then were able to out-license this to a company in the States, a NASDAQ listed company, who then went to the NIH and the NIH now are collaborating to develop this. And as I said, going into the clinic in Q2 2022. And so what we were able to show is it was active in all our pain models. We also know that it is active in humans and how we know it's active in humans is that someone else had done some gene therapy by looking for the gene for this drug, uh, for this particular compound and giving the gene that gives rise to encephalin and showing that it was active in bone cancer patients. We had no analgesic tolerance and we had activity in morphine tolerance and we showed it was uniquely uh, centrally acting and so unlikely to cause another increasingly troublesome effect. Those of you who've ever taken opioids would most certainly have experienced constipation and so less likely to cause constipation. So based on this, and then, you know, you can really compare it to the other um, molecules out there. And Velta is now what it's called and comparing to fentanyl and morphine. And the most important thing is that you're, you're not going to get the constipation side effects less likely, less likely to get the respiratory depression. We, we know it's act, it doesn't give you analgesic tolerance and we know it's active in morphine tolerance. And we did some behavioral studies to show that it possibly would not cause euphoria because we didn't have any reward seeking behavior. Of course, euphoria will be measured in the clinical trial, but um, it really looks like quite a promising medicine. And that's why Verpax um, managed to get the collaboration with the US government to develop uh, this compound. And we've looked at other areas. So our, we're, we're really about controlling a drug transport. And one other thing we're able to, to do is have eye drops that deliver a lot of drug to the eye, but you don't have any plasma exposure. And that's very important for this particular drug, uh, tacrolimus, because plasma exposure is associated with a severe side effect. And actually topical tacrolimus has a black box warning because of this side effect. So we've shown that we, we are able to target to the tissues of interest, but not spill over into uh, the plasma which again is unusual. And one of the other areas, so we've talked about uh, avoiding the blood brain barrier by using this technology through the nose and the blood brain barrier is not just getting across the barrier, but also stopping the degradation of the peptide. We're also able to deliver to the retina and we deliver to the retina with eye drops. At the moment, if you want to deliver drugs to the retina, you have to use a needle into the eyeball. So this just shows delivering to the retina with eye drops in a, a rabbit model and also showing that we're actually able to modify uh, the disease. And the disease in this case is non-infectious posterior uveitis. 
a disease with a low prevalence, but a high impact when it comes to causing blindness. And at the moment, this uh, particular molecule is being developed as an intravitreal drug injected into the eyeball, but we're able to show that we can modis modify the disease. And you can see the chart at the top um, right-hand corner, really showing that when we apply this drug, we have a similar response to, to dexamethasone. So we're able to uh, deliver to the brain peptides that are normally chewed up, degraded in the blood, and we're able to deliver to the retina, and it goes through the scleral route, across the scleral route and into uh, the retina. And so the same technology that we're using for delivering to the brain is the same technology we're using to deliver to the eye. And you can see the cartoon on your right hand side showing how it works. It has a permanent positive charge. Normally, if you have a positive charge on your molecule, that changes with pH. But the molecule that we've synthesized, the positive charge is permanent. And yet the drug is the, the, the um, actual technology is very well tolerated in the eye. And we, we've demonstrated this. But this positive charge brings it in close proximity to the mucosa and the cell surface, which is negatively charged, it's destabilized, and then you get the drug going into the tissues at a higher rate than other systems, such as drugs, drug suspensions, or oil in water emulsions. And crucially, because of the way we've designed the actual molecule, the technology that I'm talking about, there is no ocular irritation as well. So, um, this pharmaceutical technology is able to deliver very, very labile peptides to the brain. And that application has been used to develop a pain therapeutic. And it's also able to deliver drugs to the retina when you use just topical eye drops. And again, where, you, where we have developed a medicine for posterior uveitis. And the other thing is that when you develop these eye drops, we are not getting plasma exposure. And we have demonstrated that multiple times. And then use this polymer to um, create some drug candidates, which are now being developed by our partners. I have to thank all the people that I've ever worked with. I haven't presented all the work we've ever done in our lab, but we've worked with so many different people from so many different laboratories all around the world, or almost in, in, in every, every um, part of the world we've had collaborators. And the little photograph on the right is, is really just uh, my family and thanking you know, the, all, all the family support. You can't do this without family support. I actually have four daughters, but uh, uh, only two of them are, are in this picture and, and two of my grandchildren. And you know, 30 years ago, I was a sort of uh, single mother with three young children just starting my PhD. I had no idea that one day I'd be talking to the Academy of Medical Sciences. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>